The Glass Kingdom by Lawrence Osborne, set in Bangkok, a very steamy, sultry Bangkok indeed it is, and published by Hogarth. So if people ask me who is my favourite author, I will often say Lawrence Osborne, um, because he has quite a sort of dark way of writing, his stories can often be quite noirish, and he is excellent on location, and very often he is, um, you know, compared to Graham Greene, and I think there is some justification for that. Sarah is in New York and she is ingratiating herself into the life of an elderly um, author in the city, quite well known and you know she takes over domestic duties, she takes over helping her writing, making notes of her life and basically becomes her right hand woman. Then one day she has to take some money uh, for some payment of goods and various articles over to Hong Kong and there she has to meet up with a man but she does the wrong thing and she decides to keep the cash that she has and just disappear and so she disappears to Bangkok which she feels will be a city where she can just sort of you know dive in and not be found for a while while you know everything settles down back in New York and she decides to take an apartment at a place called the Kingdom. Now the Kingdom is a modern um, luxurious building that has several towers connected by walkways it's quite a sort of stunning eye-catching a piece of architecture but somehow it is beginning to feel a little bit rusty rugged um, it's falling down a bit just around the edges it's not what it should be so there we are we already have a setting that is a little bit eerie a little bit sultry and it's a little bit noir Sarah is swimming in the pool that goes with her apartment, um, you know, all the apartments can use this pool, and she meets up with somebody called Marley, and Marley invites her to play poker on a games night with two other women, and they get stuck in, they get pretty drunk, and this becomes a fairly regular feature, the girls become quite friendly, and things progress. Marley has a boyfriend, a Japanese guy, who um, it seems is not very good with her. He might be beating her up, he does take her away for a holiday, and while she goes on holiday, she gives her dog to Sarah to look after. So they're, bit, they're very good friends. Out on the streets of Bangkok, there is a very unsettled feeling, is there going to be a coup? There is a lot of unrest and there is a building site next door where the cranes swing around almost 24-7. Um, there are some tobacco warehouses. So Lawrence Osborne is great at really putting his characters in a very strong setting that makes you feel just a little bit uncomfortable for them. And Sarah has to be uncomfortable because Marley, um, you know, gets on very well with her and it all becomes a little bit claustrophobic. So much so that Sarah feels probably it's time to move on, particularly when she finds out that the author for whom she worked has actually died. But there are a few twists and turns to come towards the end of the book. And there were some sort of fallow periods where a lot of description happened. But coming towards the end of the book, um, I really suddenly went ding. And I thought, yes, of course, that's what's happening. So this is um, a, an interesting book. You know, it is absolutely fabulous if you want to go to Bangkok um, to really kind of experience what it feels like through literature, through literary tourism. Um, so I think picking up Lawrence Osborne's The Glass Kingdom would be a very good read for Bangkok. <laughs>